Welcome back to the University of Southern California Institute of Armenian Studies series that we are calling After War Before Peace. We began this series immediately after the signing of the ceasefire document in November of 2020. After 44 days of war, uh, military assault uh, initiated by Azerbaijan with the support of Turkey on the Armenians of Gharapakh. 44 days later, a very uh, asymmetric loss, losing also part of the territory of the Gharapakh autonomous region that became the self-declared Republic of Gharapakh. And since then, other than that one uh, ceasefire document, we've not really had a systematic uh, process that will lead to anything that will resemble a meaningful peace. And part of our challenge here is to try to ask the questions about the many, many, many complex aspects of this conflict, post-conflict situation. One of those complex aspects, obviously, is the neighborhood and the neighbors. And so conversation about Iran and its uh, response after the conflict to the conflict uh, conclusion, the conclusion of the military conflict at least, and of course a discussion of with and about Georgia and its place and perception about its own place in the region after the conflict. Those are two important conversations. Today we're going to have the Georgia conversation. Um, joining me uh, always is Emil Sanamian, Caucasus analyst who's been following Gharapagh, following the region for many years. Emil, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, we're going to speak to two individuals from Tbilisi. First, we will have Georgi Kanashvili, followed by George Tumasian. Let me introduce Georgi first. Uh, Georgi Kanashvili is head of the board of the Tbilisi-based NGO, Institute for the Study of Nationalism and Conflict. He is a research fellow at Democracy Research Institute, and he lectures at the Georgian American and the International Black Sea Universities. Georgi has been part of various dialogue processes for peace and cooperation, Georgian Abkhaz, Georgian Ossetian, Georgian Russian. Georgi, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me here. Hello. Well, we couldn't have concluded this series without a conversation with Tbilisi and about Georgia's role, Georgia's perspective. Um, you know, this is both an obvious conversation and a difficult one. Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan are in this Caucasus region, and this is a region that really doesn't function as a region. Hasn't since the fall of the Soviet Union, and the conclusion of this conflict may mean it won't for a long time to come. Um, let's talk a little bit about Georgia's relationships with Turkey and with Azerbaijan particularly economic relationships, of course, and they're critically important to Georgia, and one wonders what happens to them in the aftermath of this military conflict. Let's start there. Yes, thank you for uh, inviting me, and uh, thank you for interesting question. Uh, actually, uh, Georgian Azerbaijanian and Georgian Turkish relations, like from the very uh, independence of the Georgia and those like South Caucasian uh, countries like Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia were like very intensive, especially as you said, uh, in economical terms. Also, there had been some cooperation, especially in the early 90s, but later also uh, in direction of uh, military cooperation. Uh, Georgian troops have been participating in, in various uh, trainings in Turkey also, and that was as on a bilateral level also, like in the context of the NATO. Uh, economically, as you uh, well mentioned, like those countries are um, well connected. Uh, and they they're, are and they're very serious <laughs> trading partners, right? Depending on what I read, they are Georgia's <coughs> primary trade partners. Yeah, with no. um, other neighbor, neighbors Russia. like uh, R Russia, its role is increasing for the last years. And, and of course, there are some, 
uh, you and then uh, Armenia also, but of course, if we take in absolute figures, of course, the uh, role in economical terms for Georgia of Turkey and Azerbaijan is prevailing. Unfortunately, even till now, Georgian and Armenian economical relations like have, let's say, the room to improve, and uh, often there is kind of a little bit asymmetry. Uh, at least that was the case uh, till the recent uh, war in Karabakh, uh, because the only, let's say, the on route, on, on uh, ground, uh, the main, let's say, corridor for the goods for uh, of, of Armenia that was the Georgia was providing there, like the goods were getting to Russia or from Russia to Armenia or through Georgian seaports. But now, and maybe later we will speak, I think the things can theoretically, at least the agreement signed after the uh, conflict in Karabakh, uh, provides the possibility that Armenian goods uh, can travel in, through Azerbaijan to Russia and theoretically to Turkey. But let's see how, how it will I'm sure Emil will want to ask you about the military cooperation with Turkey, but before that, I want Emil, I want to push the economic part just a little bit more. If I, um, given the, conc the way the war concluded, and given the fact that Georgia has in fact been the transit hub huh, between Turkey and Azerbaijan for so many things. Uh, given that the ceasefire document says that there will be some sort of land corridor connecting uh -huh. Turkey through Nakhichevan to Azerbaijan, if I were sitting in Tbilisi in a leadership position, I'd be worried. Is Tbilisi worried? Uh, <coughs> there is like uh, here, like the, uh, let's say, two main visions of the situation in that regard. First, uh, and it, uh, the war and actually the results of the war were quite surprising, if honestly, here in, 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 in Tbilisi. And things, uh, there was the feeling that this conflict will stay in the same, let's say, more or less in the same uh, uh, way as it was uh, for after, after 1994. Uh, and uh, that was providing uh, for Georgia quite uh, uh, suitable economical like gains because like all goods too. were yeah, all goods were flying uh, through Georgia and it was the it was capitalizing on that not like <laughs> I mean not consciously but that that, that was the situation so mm -hmm. that was uh, by coming naturally that all goods through like uh, we are, we are crossing the Georgia and Georgia Take was them for uh, granted. yeah uh, and that, that that was the feeling and that was Georgia was like positioning itself as the country with like more or less secure transit and uh, uh, adding on that the ports uh, in Batumi and in Poti and theoretically there was the the uh, the possibility and this this project still is. Uh, I discussed the Anaklia port. Uh, uh, there, that was like providing the, those possibilities, economical possibilities for Georgia. But uh, now things are changing, uh, and that means that if the agreement will be fully uh, implemented, uh, that means that Georgia's like strategical position in that regards are are, are changing. Uh, and some of like uh, experts in Georgia were speaking, and not only in Georgia, as you right mentioned, were like like a cautious that like economically we can lose uh, in uh, short term and maybe in the long term. Honestly, from my personal position on that regard, is that if like uh, the sides and let, let's see, that's unfortunately not up on our on us. Uh, that if there will be relevant peace. And if, uh, as you again mentioned in your uh, initial speech, that the region was always like, if, if it was not functioning as the region, but if, if that will start, like goods will start flowing in all directions, finally, after years, theoretically, 
Croatia could be uh, like win-win position. But that depends how Armenian and Azerbaijani relations will, uh, will, will go further and if there will be really uh, peace in the region. Because like still a lot of things are not clear and especially what 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 uh, what is the status of the uh, Karabakh after uh, like years coming and what will be the role of the Russian troops after five years of the uh, signed agreement. So the let's say business is not over so far. That's that's the feeling at least. Emil, moment. do you want to jump in on the economy before we move to military? Sure. Yeah, I was uh, wondering whether um, you know the, the, that issue of uh, railroad where Abkhazia had come up uh, before, and there were uh, opposition, of course, in Georgia, and also some opposition in Abkhazia too, uh, uh, in terms of reopening those uh, ties uh, or those uh, that infrastructure. Has that come back into play as a result of this war? A very good uh, question. Uh, actually, the issue of uh, railway, which is uh, is now connect like uh, uh, not only Georgia with Russia to Abkhazia, but also Armenia, and there were like by many years like actually the, after the war in Abkhazia, so it means almost 30 years. There are talks about the opening of the railway, uh, and it, it was like coming, and then again somehow like the issue was dropped. Way, but uh, after after the uh, war in Karabakh, there were talks about that. Uh, but I I have the feeling that not not feeling, but uh, because it, it was discussed. But uh, uh, due to coronavirus, due to uh, internal political instability in Georgia, and as we see, in Armenia was also not very stable uh, situation politically. And uh, that issue was somehow like not discussed further, but there, there is uh, a, 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 uh, there is another like uh, argument that if uh, uh, how economically it will be it's uh, relevant and viable if uh, that uh, road uh, will finally open up. I mean the connection like uh, uh, Azerbaijan, uh, Armenia. Uh, Turkey and Russia, if the goods will go through this, like, I would say, more southern corridor, uh, if uh, there will be still the need of uh, Abkhazian uh, railway. Uh, and they are uh, quite like uh, it's linked with additional uh, problems like political uh, status of Abkhazia and the role of it. So, I mean, that that is the kind of the project which uh, often is discussed. Uh, but was never realized. You know, part of the challenges... Emil, did you want to continue on that? Uh, no, just in general, I mean, it seems uh, uh, this uh, war, one of the main outcomes of this war, is or increased uh, influence, Turkish influence in, in the Caucasus, uh -huh. you probably would agree with that. Uh, so uh, has there been any kind of reassessment in that sense? I mean, is that uh, does that create some kind of hopeful... Uh, uh, thoughts in Tbilisi in terms of using Turkish support for, I don't know, some kind of revanche, revanche in, uh, in South Ossetia, Abkhazia, or maybe that's, uh, that's creating kind of concern in Georgia that maybe this is something that should push us to renegotiate certain things with Russia. Is there, is there that kind of reassessment in, as a result of this war? I, I, I can, uh, there are like debates and discussions about that, but if honestly I have not, uh, seen or participate in very like systematic analysis of that. Uh, I think that, that this rethinking of the situation will come, uh, especially now when the uh, political crisis, and because maybe you, I, I'm not sure how, how, how well you know the situation. Yeah, now that Georgia, the political but, situation in yeah, Georgia it, is a little more stable and predictable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's been a co difficult co time. Co 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 coincided with the conflict in Karabakh. So uh, all forces, intellectual forces, how we are focused on internal uh, situation <clears throat> that was uh, Georgi, making problematic the discussion. But uh, Georgi, ju ju me, just one, yeah. one thing. Ah, okay. I, I, I wanted to 
say about these uh, um, attitudes of the current Georgian political elite regarding the conflict. Uh, I don't think that the model of the solution of the Karabakh war from the, let's say, Azerbaijani side, Karabakh conflict, uh, is seriously uh, like thought uh, to be applied in Georgian context because. Uh, uh, as we see uh, in, in the context of Georgia, both in, there are, of course, in the Georgian Ossetian and Georgian Abkhazian conflict, but uh, after 2008, uh, at least uh, Russian role in it is like, like obvious. So nobody is seriously thinking about any military uh, solution of the uh, conflicts uh, in Georgia. And uh, Turkey is not considered uh, as the possible ally in a direct conflict with Russia or with Abkhaz and those areas. That's not the option. And what about the, uh, the consequences of the huge Azerbaijani economic uh, investments in Georgia, the social consequences of that? That is, this is several PhDs worth of questions, but there are many ways to try to explain the disconnect between Armenia and Georgia, Armenians and Georgians, and even Armenians of Georgia within Georgia. We could try to explain it by saying, you know, Georgia has its own issues with South Ossetia and Abkhazia, and so the Garapak situation is off-putting. Um, we could say that the Azerbaijani and Turkish investments in Georgia are so large that they also become social investments and therefore color attitudes. Um, we can talk about the centuries of Armenian presence in Georgia, right? This isn't a diaspora. These are people who've lived there forever. Uh -huh. uh, how do we explain this disconnect? Uh, uh. I have the, like if we are speaking about like the, the, the if we divide those uh, two even more issues, but like I would address first uh, how Turkish and Azerbaijani investments are regarded here in Georgia. There are mixed feelings, if honestly, because like uh, <clears throat> there were various periods of uh, relations. Between, uh, uh, Georgia has also like kind of traumatized. The Experience of relations with Turkey. Uh, historically, let's say that is why uh, there, like, there is understanding that even if, if even the greatest partner it might be somehow balanced uh, uh, economically also and in other, otherwise. Um, the same applies uh, Azerbaijan with Azerbaijan, like the. Let's say this uh, influence has not been so far translated in political pressure. And uh, I would say that uh, has not been, uh, a, at least it was not right, materialized uh, in any uh, steps, uh, unfriendly steps towards Armenia or uh, during these uh, 30 years. Uh, uh, I would say that if uh, Georgian foreign policy was uh, in some in somewhere like more or less successful, that is the balancing between Azerbaijan and between um, Armenia, uh, especially when it was coming to the very sensitive issue of the Karabakh. Uh, they were openly saying like some attempts uh, to somehow influenced the Georgian government through various like tools. Of course. Yeah. But uh, during the, uh, again, during the event, this war, like Georgia as a whole, maybe they will make some mistakes, but uh, the political elite uh, was uh, understanding that uh, that's not only about uh, relations with uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia, but uh, also that could provoke the conflict within Georgia, between Armenian and Azerbaijanian communities, and between, like, like uh, that, that, that could be a very explosive uh, 
uh, issue uh, for Georgia, which has its own like problems. Uh, that's why I would say that uh, like, so far, and I hope that that will continue. Georgia somehow more or less like uh, successfully was uh, balancing between those two. Uh, regarding the second issue, what you uh, mentioned, the um, disconnect between like Georgia, Armenia, and, made, and the problem of, uh, let's say, uh, integration of the uh, Armenian minority that uh, in, in Georgia, which is uh, quite sizable, uh, it was decreasing uh, after the collapse of like in getting the independence of Georgia. The, the, the but what was the decreasing? The level uh, of the integration was decreasing. Uh, out, no, not not the level. Uh, the uh, number of the Armenian uh, community in Georgia, as uh, many other uh, minorities, was like. Uh, if we take the, for example, the last uh, census of uh, during the USSR, uh, almost thirty percent of the Georgian population was uh, 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 consisted of uh, ethnic minorities. So the proportion of the Georgian was. Uh, growing uh, and other minorities were de decreasing, uh, uh, and uh, but uh, Georgi knows uh, uh, the second speaker very well. This issue, as is also ethnically uh, Armenian, knows the problems so which are and still exist, unfortunately, in Georgia. But that is not, I would say, that is not inclusively. Uh, problems related with the uh, uh, Armenian uh, minority, but the, with the minorities, uh, uh, with other Emily. minorities also. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. but Emily, things Emily, are changing as a whole a little bit uh, in a positive way. Emil, we should conclude this, this segment. Did you want to go down any other roads? Um, well, no, probably not. I mean, just in general, it, the, the, what unites, I think, all of these uh, countries around uh, uh, Armenia, around uh, Azerbaijan, is uh, uh, sort of the fact that there's very little people, people traffic uh, between uh, Armenia and Georgia. I mean, there's quite a bit from Armenia to Georgia, but from Georgia to Armenia, it's, it's considerably less. Uh -huh. From Iran into Armenia, uh, but especially if you take Karabakh, Karabakh is sort of like terra incognita for uh, uh, for most of these countries that are uh, in very close vicinity uh, to to the region. So it's not surprising uh, that uh, the war, the, its outcomes, uh, uh, were sort of caught both Georgians, Iranians, and other many other people by surprise. Yeah, it always comes back to people relations, doesn't it, um, Georgi? There's a lot more to cover. Um, what I will take away from what you've said is that at the end of the day, these relationships that have existed, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Georgia, uh, are really economic trade-based relationships. And that Georgia's takeaway from the conclusion of the war is that perhaps the new configurations will need lead to new economic situations, even if the existing ones are shaken a bit. Is that fair? Uh, so, uh, they are, of course, like uh, political and uh, other, uh, in other directions, like cooperation between uh, all the, uh, countries. And uh, the main thing, what I like, again, want to say that, like, if we won't somehow in a, in a short term or even Long, medium term will find somehow mutually acceptable solutions of those conflicts. Unfortunately, we will stay quite poor underdeveloped countries because we unfortunately are hostages of those conflicts which are still quite alive. And as we saw in Karabakh and uh, just several weeks ago in, or around Ukraine, everything can happen. And uh, winners can became losers, losers, winners, and like things are changing. So like better to somehow find the uh, ways, uh, compromises. 
uh, it was very very sad and for like I, I have not seen like I have uh, here in Georgia who were somehow happy with the developments in uh, in Karabakh. Uh, it was very sad to observe and uh, uh, still uh, you said that there is like not too much traffic but but I have uh, a lot of friends uh, in Karabakh and when we were watching what, everything what was uh, going on it was like really tragic and uh, hopefully in the future we will avoid this kind of development. Let's hope people-to-people -people relations are not just developed but are allowed because this post-war environment is not very conducive, it seems, to um, actually moving forward with that basic requirement for peace. Um, Georgi Kanashvili, thank you very much for joining okay. us uh, for thank this very Jean. important mm -hmm. conversation. And we're going to move on to Georgi, George uh, Tumasian, also from Tbilisi. Uh, George heads the Artsakhan Armenian Community Platform of Georgia, aimed at political and civic participation of the Armenian community of Georgia through dialogue. He is also the founder of the Caucasian Academy of Diplomacy. And, uh, well, George, first welcome. Uh, and if I were to say that just the fact that we need an Armenian community platform aimed at political and civic participation already says something about the nature of the integration of the Armenian community with the, with the Georgian elites and the structures. Let's talk very briefly first, please, about that before we actually talk about the war and its consequences. And even that one question has two parts, right? There's the way in which the Armenians of, 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 uh, of uh, Javakh, Javakheti, interact with the structures. And then there is the very deeply integrated, assimilated integration of Armenians of Tbilisi in many ways, right? And if it, let's start with that and then go into the war and how that was received and reacted to. Hello, Salpi. Greetings. So interesting question. Uh, for sure, we have different uh, conditions for Armenians in Tbilisi and for Armenians living outside of Tbilisi, basically in Javakh, Javakh at the origin of Georgia. Uh, in Tbilisi, Armenian community is very weak at the moment. Uh, the number of population decreased. Uh, our integrational level uh, is also decreased uh, since we have no basic representation and activity of Armenian community. So once uh, the strongest Armenian community called Tiflis Armenians are now the weakest, I can say. Uh, at the same time, what's related to Javak, uh, Armenian community is not uh, integrated politically from there. And we had uh, numerous of issues uh, rep of represent related to representation of Armenian community from there. And uh, also it's about perception Georgian society has about Armenians living in the region. So at the moment, uh, unfortunately, Armenian community is not well integrated. At the same time, it is, has no structures and uh, this uh, system of uh, community we have every in every country of the world. So Georgia is quite close to Armenia, but basically uh, our community is very weak. How did that weakness, what you're calling weakness, how did that, the reality of that situation impact the way in which the war was reported, talked about, understood in Georgia? Um, first of all, we need to say that uh, Georgian society was prepared uh, in anti-Armenian set settlement for quite a long of time. And it it's basically came from Azerbaijan. So Azerbaijan worked uh, using different, uh, and is still working using different mechanisms of um, uh, hybrid warfare. And it includes uh, fake news. Uh, it includes some uh, other type of media sources related to Facebook, first of all, some uh, news agencies there, and they spread different information uh, related to Armenia, causing uh, increasing of levels of Armenophobia in Georgia, uh, 
relate to Armenian community and to Armenia itself, uh, as well as actively comparing uh, Karabakh uh, with uh, Abkhazia uh, and these tools of Azerbaijan was doing uh, exactly that. So uh, during the days of conflict in uh, Karabakh, we also had even uh, movies uh, captured by Azerbaijan in Georgian language as I sponsored it on Facebook. So you can see the pressure it's coming to Georgian society uh, to manipulate the views of Georgian society related to Karabakh conflict. Emil, do you want to jump in or? Uh, yeah, what? Uh, uh, let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, the the little exposure that I've had to the Tbilisi Armenian community, one thing that I kind of learned about is that uh, some of uh, Armenian businessmen from Armenia, um, you know. Uh, some former officials uh, would have uh, a sort of an economic presence in Georgia, um, you know, buy up buildings or some other business or whatever. Is that still the case? Is there some kind of, uh, uh, you know, business presence from Armenia in Georgia? It's basically close to zero. And even if there is some business, uh, business represented in Georgia, it's mostly about personal ties uh, of that person's maybe to government of Georgia and so on. So it, it's not actually related to Georgia-Armenia relationships or to Armenian community in any sense. Hmm. So the impact of yeah, Sorry, well, why, how did that come about? Does it come about naturally or did this business uh, interest somehow... W were there any substantial business interests to begin with? Maybe I'm, I'm misconstruing this for myself. I think... Uh, it, yeah, business interests are quite limited. Still, we have opportunities uh, in that direction, but I think countries are not working in uh, that direction, actually. We had numerous of meetings uh, of prime minister for Armenia and uh, Georgia, but in fact, we have no uh, new agreements, treaties or some type of documents between two countries. So our neighbor, even if you ask Georgian officials, what's the level of relationship with Armenia? They will say friendly relationship. And while you ask about Azerbaijan or Turkey, it's strategic allies and partnership. So you can compare what strategic ally or strategic partner means compared to friend or friendly neighbor. So that's it. Mm -hmm. So obviously part of what's also driving this is um, an absence of knowledge about past relationships and the presence of Armenians in Georgia for a very long time. So given the absence of knowledge about the past, the current, what you say is um, uh, anti-Armenian sentiment, given obviously the huge role that Azerbaijan plays and what Georgi had said earlier was interesting that as far as Turkey goes, there is the memory of uh, clashes and conflict with Turkey by Georgian society. But with Azerbaijan, it's more or less a new sort of deep relationship. Yeah, they've always been neighbors, but the depth of this relationship is really new. Given all of this, what is the perception by the media, by the NGO community, by the elites, about what happens next between Georgia and uh, between Azerbaijan and Armenians, and how does Georgia see its place there in the region? I still think, as I said to, to Georgi, if I was Tbilisi, I wouldn't be sleeping nights, given this new sort of rapprochement between, not rapprochement, land connection, real connection between Turkey and Azerbaijan. Well, Salpi, that uh, brings us to another another case. Uh, Today's Georgian government is uh, very connected to Russian Federation, to Russia, actually. Basically, they declare Western political uh, vector, but it's not what they are doing. So, I mean, I, I think it's in their interest to be limited to only uh, Russian ties and actually between this Russian-Turkish uh, uh, paradigm yeah, of the region, what we have at the moment. So they are not that worried, that worried uh, for the projects because Georgi also mentioned, yeah, Anaklia port, which was great opportunity for Georgia, was limited and it's not 
was not related to Karabakh. So, I mean, Georgian government is limiting itself, Georgian's ability to be transport hub and to integrate most with Western um, uh, allies. Uh, but at the same time, to be back to uh, to the question, uh, the um, uh, main worry of Armenian community, we can say, is the fact that Armenia, uh, Azerbaijan, by its activity, uh, caused the situation when anti-Armenian settlement in Georgia, Armenophobia, what we mm. call it, uh, is probably the highest after Azerbaijan and Turkey. And it's really... Uh, important issue. Unfortunately, Armenia's government is not wanting to even hear about that. And they are even limiting any possibility for from us to talk about that, because that's the issue we need to work with Georgia, with Georgian government, with Georgian society. And if you go to Georgian society and ask about perception to Armenians, most population have deep uh, negative uh, consequences to that. And it's also related to Azerbaijan trying to represent the Javakh, Javakheti Armenians are also separatists in some way. So we have created that narrative and that's why when it's coming to Karabakh, most of Georgian society have clear views that it, it's part of Azerbaijan. And it's coming from that narrative that uh, Armenians uh, can do same or in other places and so on because it uh, was prided in social media for years. And also to uh, be back to the case, uh, Georgian, uh, no, not only civil society, but his, some members of uh, the scientific uh, sphere, we can say, hist histori persons who work on historical books and so on, they are very connected to Azerbaijan. We very uh, good know how Azerbaijan is corrupting European politicians. It's doing twice more here in Georgia, corrupting some historical per, uh, persons working in scientific areas uh, to change the history of Armenian presence here in Tbilisi, here in Georgia, and to represent Armenians as a danger to Georgia. At the same time, uh, to uh, be back to issues of Armenian community, uh, you said that Armenians had long pre uh, presence here in Georgia, but in Tbilisi, for example, all buildings built by Armenians are not even represented today or mentioned to be built by Armenians. At the same time, Armenian community has no even single charge, uh, which is the ownership of Armenian community. Like, and there are a lot of charges in Tbilisi, which actually means not only charge as a historical uh, monument, but also sur surrounding buildings as place to, uh, for Armenian community to grow and develop. Uh, five most important these charges are just ruining every day. And Georgian government uh, is uh, actually by inaction supporting that, in fact, for 30 years. It's not just one government. And unfortunately, again, Armenian government for this 30 years has done nothing in order to discuss real issues and to try to solve them. Well, that's certainly an interesting context from which to view the perceptions of the Ratapal conflict. It kind of puts things in place. Um, Emil, do you want to go in another direction? We have just a few minutes left. Um, yeah, I, I, we we tend to be focused on uh, on uh, on these issues, obviously, from an Armenian perspective. And having been to Tbilisi, having seen a sort of the dilapidated uh, you know state of uh, Armenian historical buildings in Tbilisi, that of course was of great concern but it seems the focus has been uh from the armenian perspective uh extensively on the history and uh, sort of preservation of history and and uh, maybe some uh, church disputes etc uh it in general my sense is that georgian society uh sort of turns off a lot of uh things that have to do with uh, countries that are south east and north of them uh, and sort of focuses on kind of you know trying to f trying to feel like uh, they're in Europe, even though physically they may not be. Uh, and uh, it's it seems that uh, you know the the perceptions of what is happening between Armenians and Azerbaijanis are kind of on a very very uh, sort of a, a, you know side uh, and sort of ignored and uh, you know uh, part of this part of the Middle East, you know yeah. part of the part of the part of the world that they don't want to be part of. Uh, you know, there's this uh, Georgian film, uh, Trip to Karabakh, right? I think that might be the only kind of uh, 
a visual picture that most Georgians have of uh, Karabakh, Armenia, Azerbaijan, etc. I would like to add a few interesting things related to uh, the discussion you had with Georgi. Uh, you men mentioned also uh, participation, yeah, Georgian reaction on that. Uh, in first days of war, uh, Georgian legion represented in Ukraine, which is deeply connected to uh, former president of Georgia, Saakashvili, who openly supported uh, Azerbaijan's aggression. Uh, that Legion claims that they are ready to go to Karabakh and fight with, together with Azerbaijanis. And the case is that the same region, uh, Legion did the same uh, st uh, statement in 2016 during the April War. So, I mean, unfortunately, that's reality we have. And at the same time, uh, during the war, uh, we had the, uh, on, you know, the day of occupation of Shushi, uh, and end of conflict is also day of uh, flag of Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately in Tbilisi on that day, while Armenian community was, you, you can imagine in what kind of situation, Georgian government, I don't know why, decided to put Azerbaijani flag in the city and to commemorate day of flag of Azerbaijan, which never happened. Of course, they do commemorate day of independence of Azerbaijan and Armenia as well, but not day of flag of Azerbaijan. So on, uh, doing that on uh, 9th of November was another step probably showing the reaction of current Georgian government. That's the that, that settlement, sentiment Armenian community has at the moment. And yet the current Georgian government is really in this very now most recent organization of it is really playing this dual role, right? As as you said, they continue to espouse the Western line. It was the EU Commission president who came to figure out how to bring the opposition and the, uh, those elected uh, into some sort of coalition. And yet there is clearly a very Russian direction. Now, what you had mentioned earlier, Georgi mentioned it actually earlier, about military cooperation, uh, Turkey and Georgia, some of that is within the NATO EAPC umbrella, um, but with Georgia's now also looking to Russia, not just to the West, all of those relationships are going to be reviewed. And within that, Georgia's interests regarding the region, regarding Armenia, regarding Azerbaijan, and of course the post-conflict situation in the region is going to be fascinating. Iran. It's Let me ask you about Iran too before we continue. The presence of Iran or Iranians or Iranian culture in Georgia. No, we had influence of Iran in uh, historical terms, but at the moment, influence of Iran is very limited due to United States uh, policy. But I would like to be back to a topic you mentioned about cooperation with Turkey and Azerbaijan. Uh, it's not limited by NATO. We have trilateral format in the region, Turkey, the Georgia, zone. Azerbaijan, yes, and they are uh, conducting, it's interesting, they are conducting meetings uh, on the level of foreign affairs ministries in Turkey or in Georgia or in Azerbaijan, and at the same time they are conducting meetings uh, on the level of Ministry of Defense, Minister of Defense or uh, Chief of Staff. So it's also looks like to be not only political but also military cooperation but it's not limited by nato and if we see the reality of the region turkey is going far from nato at the moment so that participation is also influenced by huge role of turkey we have in georgia and if you go to back to the topic you will see that uh president of georgia Sal uh, salome zorabishvili she even supported in some way the format uh suggested by uh, Erdogan, this uh, platform, three by three. which is actually, yeah, putting uh, West out of the region. So that's interesting because Georgian government is balancing. They are sometimes supporting Erdogan's and uh, Krem Kremlin's politics here in the region, but then officially supporting also this Western uh, commitments Georgia has. So they are trying to sit on two chairs at the moment. I have one last question, unless Emil wants to add one. My question is about the room that the Armenian government has to be more visible, active, influential in at least some ways, at least to be in the room 
in Tbilisi. Is, if the Armenian government were so inclined and able, is there room for that in, in Tbilisi, in official oh. Tbilisi? Sure. I believe and uh, that there is huge opportunities to develop ties with Georgia and first of all with Georgian society to explain and resolve a lot of issues we have in bilateral relationships so that can be a huge uh, step forward uh, for two nations to come closer because historically we were very close but at the moment we are very far from each other and uh, but for that Armenian government needs to uh, see the issues and try to solve them. But what they tr they are doing is to try to uh, demonstrate to Armenian society in Armenia as well that there is no issues no in Georgia. Problems. If right. you yeah, if you see right. if you see statement of uh, yeah Prime Minister Pashinyan coming to Georgia, the they met to Armenian community uh, and everything is perfect. But uh, you look to April twenty fourth in Tbilisi. 50 person we are in front of Turkish em embassy protesting out of 60,000 Armenians living in Tbilisi only, not only in Georgia, but in Georgia we have about 250,000. So that basically means that there is no this community, but Armenian government really needs to start to work with Georgia and and open the topics which is causing Armenophobia, which is causing issues uh, between our nations. Very good. Um, I'm, yeah, if I could uh, add a final, really final question, point, yeah. Uh, it seems uh, the, Georgia does try to balance uh, relations uh, with uh, Armenia in some way, even though Armenia doesn't really offer much uh, to Georgia aside from sort of complaints and problems. Uh, but uh, do you see a sense in Georgia that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the pressure on Armenia, the, the pressure that Armenia is coming under from Turkey, from Azerbaijan, might uh, is obviously increasing Russian uh, influence in Armenia, uh, Russian military presence in Armenia, and basically Georgia could end up having Russia on two borders, both on the southern and the northern border. Is there, is there that concern in Georgia? You think? Of course, sure. Georgia for Georgia, military presence of Russia in uh, Armenia and now in uh, Artsakh is a huge issue because uh, Russian Federation is. Uh, basically representing a military threat to Georgia, despite they have occupied already 20% of Georgia's territory. But I believe uh, there is a huge chance to change and shift the issues we have at the moment because Biden's recognition of Armenian genocide is opening door for Armenia, United States strategic partnership and even being allies. And while Georgia is also aiming to have uh, the strategic partnership with the United States, there is huge opportunity to, for two countries to unify their efforts in order to exit the uh, Russian-Turkish uh, this uh, region divided by Russia and Turkey together. They are acting together, in fact. We have seen that in Karabakh. I'm going to say thank you um, to you, George Tomasian, and to Georgi Kanashvili, who joined us earlier, um, for just barely scratching the surface of what should be a most important continuing conversation. So thank you to both of you. Thank you, of course, to Emil Sanamian. And thank you all for following this series, After War, Before Peace. We continue to look at the issues that must be explored in order to try to understand how to, in fact, get to peace in this region, not just between Armenians and Azerbaijanis, but also among all of the peoples of the region, and of course, Russia, Turkey, and Iran at our borders. Thank you for following this series, and thank you for following us at the University of Southern California Institute of Armenian Studies.